Episode 17 of the 2016 Skyrim Modding Guide talks about two bots by My Good Eye and Gopher, Dynavision and The Imaginator. These mods can help you transform the look of your game without the performance hit of using an ENB. I'll show you examples, talk about how to use them to best effect, and then install them. Hey guys, it's Cal from Nerdy Weasel and welcome back. So it seems kind of, you know, apropos that in episode 16, the last model we covered was Clara Lux, done by the mod author My Good Eye. Well, here we are in episode 17, and I figured we might as well get his other two main mods that he's known for doing in Skyrim installed and running for me because I really like them. And I thought that was a good time to get them done. Of course, we're talking about Dynavision and Imaginator. I use these a lot, and I think that it's a fine enhancement for those that, you know, may not be able to run ENBs, and I can explain why in a little bit, but, you know, we'll go over each one in turn, and we will start off with Dynavision, Dynamic Depth of Field by Gopher and My Good Eye. And this one's been around since 2012. It had an update in 2013 to use the MCM menu over the, you know, in-game kind of guy that caused save bloat, but, you know, basically I love this mod. It it has some main advantages as far as depth of field improvement and enhancement. You can either have a dynamic one or a static one, and you can change the depth of field strengths and the type of depth of field you may have at any given time. I'm going to put up uh, the little gopher symbol right there, and that will lead to a link to his video on the topic. I'm not going to go into all the things that it does, because I think that even though the video is from 2012, it still explains it very, very well. Nothing's really changed that much. But I'm going to talk more about why I like it, and then we'll install it at the end. You know, Dynavision in its you know most, most basic form is going to be in static mode. And that static mode will increase the depth of field to give it you know a blurriness or like a lack of focus as you get farther away from the character. And you can see a before and after. This is in near Markarth. And, you know, it just kind of gives you an idea of how far, you know, the blur will happen. And the other function is the dynamic depth of field. And that will actually change the depth of field based off of what you're looking at in game. So if you're focused in on something close, it makes things farther away appear blurry. And it will dynamically change them with your vision. I found that kind of always a little finicky, especially when I'm recording, and it's really hard to see it when I'm recording for whatever reason. You know, and it, it just makes for a weird gameplay. When you're using the dynamic depth of field, it just really, it, you always feel like you're kind of, like there's something always in your eye, and I never really liked it too much. So I primarily stay to static depth of field. And there's a couple of reasons why. The static depth of field is consistently good. It, it bases it off a of distance and bases it off of how far you can see. And it gives a nice effect. With this set of pictures, you're going to have one with the dynamic depth of field on. And you can see the mountains, even though they're farther away, and I'm not really looking at them, they're still in perfect focus. But when you throw in this other picture that Lydia kind of photobombed on me, that static depth of field really blurs out the distance and gives that more depth and more interesting look to the picture. And that leads to very, you know, dynamic looking pictures later on. And, you know, you can see pictures of, you know, sunsets and whatever else, and it really gives a nice effect. When you're in gameplay, that same depth of field gives it a three-dimensional look when you're moving around. And you see this footage, it really does enhance the look of it. It comes with an MCM menu, and you can look at that, and you can see, you know, the basic sets. I, I took this picture and wasn't quite done with it. I probably should have finished what I was doing. But all the pictures you've seen is with the depth of field set to maximum. So 1.3, both in dynamic and in static mode. And the dialogue has a slider of its own to you know, up to 1.3 as well. So you may have a lower depth of field while doing other things, but it will increase the depth of field when you're talking to an individual. It's very subtle. You can't really tell sometimes, depending on where you are, but I really do like it, you know, set to maximum. It kind of gives that feel of, 
of how it was in Oblivion, where you'd focus in on somebody and the rest of the world kind of fades out a little bit. So that's very nice. And I just generally prefer the static depth of field look. I probably won't play you know, my game at 1.3. I usually turn it down to about 1.1, 1.2 on the static depth of field. Now, regarding the dynamic depth of field, it has its own uses, even though I don't play with it. If you're doing screenshots or you're trying to create, you know, something, you know, artistic, the dynamic depth of field is the way to go on that because it doesn't necessarily measure how far something is overall on the screen. It basically will blur out the center object. So you can focus in on a character like this shot here with Fiona, even though Lydia wasn't relatively that far away, the static depth of field would still have her in perfect focus, but by using the dynamic depth of field, which you can change on the fly in game using the MCM, you can see even though she's not that far away, she's still out of focus. So it makes for a nice look and get up close using free cam and definitely, you know, get some pretty pictures. But that's, you know, the general thing. Look at Gopher's video and you can go ahead and decide for yourself. Let's go ahead and install it. Files on this is just one file and see it's version 2.2 updated in 2013. So nothing's really changed. Extremely low weight, 18 kilobytes. Go into Mod Organizer and you go to your downloads and you can see I have it right there. Dyna DynaVision, double click to install, manual, and you can see it has a BSA and an ESP. It's such a small BSA. You can either unpack it or un not unpack it. It's not gonna affect performance any. And it looks good. Come on down, activate it. Now I tested it a number of different ways and I actually like it being up high. And this is how I've always kind of had DynaVision is up high and it works just fine, but basically so it's out of the way. Plugins on this as well, did I? Oh, it already placed <laughs> it. Mod Organizer remembered where I had it before and already placed it there for me. But you saw I didn't, I activated it right now. And you can see it's above Sky Tweak. You can move this one up above Sky Tweak as well to match the two. But this is where I tested it and did most of my screenshots with it. It worked just fine. I didn't have any little visual bugs or anything else that would cause any problems. And that's where it is. So we will just go ahead and move on to our next mod. And now we're going to finally talk about a mod that will actually change the appearances of the game itself, the graphics, without actually using an ENB. You can make dramatic changes without, you know, affecting your frame rate, you know, using a tool called the Imaginator. And that uh, is on the Nexus. And you can see it is the Imaginator visual control device for Skyrim by My Good Eye and Gopher. This should be really called the My Good Eye Special. And you can see it's mod number 13049. And basically, you know, what this does is changes the effects in game, such as contrast, saturation, the intensity of the sky and sun, and, in, you know, increases saturation and tints. And it does it all by an MCM venue. And what you can do is kind of go through this stuff, and it'll describe it to you. The videos are old, but uh, they're not pulling up, but that's okay. You know, read what it does and all this stuff. But basically, I'll kind of go through each of the MCM menus, and you can get an idea of what they do. And my suggestion on this is when you're playing with it, just kind of go back and forth and, you know, look at the intensities of each, you know, set it to max and set it to minimum, and then, you know, get an idea for yourself. But let's go through it all the same. And for right now, I'm going to ignore the presets because, you know, it will make more sense if you go through and touch on all the other topics. Under general, you'll have contrast, brightness, and saturation. Of course, you know, those can go up and down, and those are pretty self-explanatory. Contrast will increase the differential between black and white, or dark and light. You know, increase it, you'll get deeper shadows. Decrease it, and you'll have less, you know, differential between the two. Brightness is pretty self-explanatory. It'll increase the overall brightness of the game. Now, it won't change it for interiors versus exteriors, but it will do it for the entire game and your entire look. Saturation, of course, you know, is more vivid colors or less vivid colors. And under the cinematic section, you'll have sunlight and sky. And these are actually a little confusing when you first talk about them. Sunlight is the intensity of the outdoor light, the effects of the sun. 
increase it, you're going to have a brighter outdoor environment. Decrease it, you'll have less brightness. So you could, in essence, increase the overall brightness of the game, then decrease the sun intensity, and you'll have normal indoor or normal outdoor environment, but in darker indoors. Or, you know, you get the point, anyways. Uh, sky is basically the brightness of this sky box. And if you increase it, you're going to have very vivid, bright nights. The sky will be very, you know, light and you can see lots of stars and whatnot. But if you decrease it, you will have a bluer sky, but a darker sky box at night. So it's a trade off there. Under Bloom, think about this as the glow of light sources such as torches and sconces and that sort of thing. From my untrained eye, how this works is you can increase only one of the three settings, low, medium, and high. And I kind of looked at it and said, you know what, it looks to me that low is basically increase the bloom 1 through 10, medium would be 11 through 20, and high would be 21 through 30. That's just kind of how I looked at it. And, you know, I didn't really like the effects of using a lot of bloom. So it was something I very, you know, use on a low setting for the most part. And of course, under tinters is increasing the saturation of individual colors. And you can go through and increase or decrease each of those and achieve different looks. Now, with each of those in mind, if you come back to the presets on the first MCM, those are different combinations of all those factors. And you can go through and increase them very slightly in a combination of however you wish. In doing so, you'll have different looks of the game. And you can play around with them. The way I did it is I just went through and increased them to maximum in each of the different ones, so I kind of knew what they did. And it achieves different looks. We're going to talk about installing the Imaginator first, and then I'll show you some options. So when you go under Files, and you see the Imaginator Visual Control Device with MCM Beta. Don't worry about it being beta. It's been beta since 2014. And you can download that with Manager. When you open up Model Organizer, come to your downloads. And you can see Imaginator Visual Control Device with MCM. Double click to install. Manual. And you can see it's going to have scripts, an ESP, and a readme.txt. You can include the readme.txt. Uh, I never do, but you know me. I, I just don't install this stuff. And click OK. And you come down, and there it is. Now, it doesn't make any changes, but what I found is that it I prefer to have it up high. Now, I'm talking really high, as in, like, underneath DynaVision. So when you come over to your plugins, I ran Loot. Where is it at? Oh, see, it actually... When I first time I installed this and ran loot, it was obviously, you know, it started out at the bottom. And when I ran loot the first time, it didn't move it. So I thought, well, I usually have it up near DynaVision. Let's go ahead and move it up to DynaVision and see what it does. And when you run loot again, you'll see that it moved it. It didn't like it being up that high. It actually wanted to be a little bit lower. So this is one of those cases where if you have it at the bottom and loot says, no, it's fine down there, it's because of some other factors and it wants to be below certain things. But if you move it up high, it's going to say, no, no, we, we can't have it up that high. We're going to move it back down low. And whatever it wants to do is fine. So you could, in essence, move this in your mod list you can move this back down to wherever you think it's appropriate. And I always like kind of matching things. So Skyrim Unbound is right there. That's probably where I'll leave it because I like to have it approximately the same. It's not a hard and fast rule as, you know, you know, associating or kind of matching plugins to your mod list, but it's something to keep in mind. So that's how I install that. When you come back over to the Nexus, and you look at it, I'm going to show you some examples. And one of the examples of what you can do with the Imaginator, and it is Skyrim presets by Xylus, who is actually one of my Twitter followers, and I just happened to find this and told her I'd be using it. Uh, she went ahead and put together three different presets, and these are a combination of the MCM menus. 
for the Imaginator. One is called Pure Realism, Dynamic War, and Totally Fresh. And when you go into the files, you're going to get the, some pictures and the screenshots of the MCM. You know, I'm going to show Pure Realism as we talk about it, and then Dynamic Warp, then Totally Fresh. And these are just examples of what the Imaginator can do for you. It basically will change the look of the game to give you a different feel overall. And it really does improve the you know, appearance of the game without really affecting FPS. And that's why I like it. Each of her presets are very good, and I overall like them. I think, think it gives you an idea of what's going on. So when you go through and you look at the files, each of them are basically, you know, download manually and you'll get all the preset configurations and the MCM screenshots. You know, you can go ahead and look at those, jot down the references and kind of, you know, use them as presets for your own Imaginator. So you have the Skyrim Imaginator presets and then you also have Totally Fresh preset is where she actually changed one of the presets that's included in the original file. Just something to think about. They're just changes. Now, how I use Imaginator. I actually have my own presets that I kind of went through and created. And I actually have a mod. And it's the Imaginator presets for the 2016 Skyrim modding guide. And it's mod 74166. It has not been published yet because I wanted to finish this video so you can have an idea, you know, of what we're talking about. Once this video is done, I'll include it in the description page so it'll be all finished and I'll, I'll make it public. In this, you know, I tried to create a, a vivid, realistic, you know, more saturated, harsher light Skyrim. And the reason why I make it, I say harsher light is that from my experience being at high altitude in extreme northern latitudes, the light is very contrasty. You have, you know, harsh differences between the two I mean, the light is it causes deep shadows and it's it's very hard on the eyes so that's why i increased the contrast and then i went ahead and increased the saturation to make it look more vivid and when i look at the screenshots that i have flashing by you right now you can see it actually looks a lot like purity the weather mod now all these screenshots are used with climates of tamriel so it's just something to keep in mind that that's kind of what I did for the presets, but you can adjust them for different weather mods or different lighting and whatnot. And you can see by using the presets that I have, it increased the warmth of the interior, increased the depth of the shadows by increasing the contrast, but the outside by decreasing the skybox, very blue skies, but very dark nights. So it's just something that you, it's a trade-off, but you can see that the colors are very, very nice. And like I said, this will be up to correspond with the video. If you go into your files, you can see I basically have to download manually. It's the screenshots that I took, the MCM set settings, and a text file. So you can go ahead and download those yourself, take a look at them, and try them out. So that's it for now. You know, episode 17 was relatively short and to the point, and I hope you find it enjoyable and I hope you help it with your game. And just to touch on this finally, the reason why I use this is that I find that ENBs to have too much of an S FPS hit on the game. And you know, of course, making videos, I wanna have as many FPS as possible. Now, will this change if I mod up the game completely? and decide to use an ENB at the very end if my you know FPS is not taking a hit, absolutely, I'll try something else out. And then I'll have to turn off the Imaginator and maybe reset things a little bit just to tweak it finally. But it is something that you can use along with DynaVision and definitely increase the, the appearance of your game without taking a big FPS hit. So that's it for now, guys. My name's Cal. I'm from Dirty Weasel, and I'm signing off.